What is good and welcome to Dub Nation, the official show of the Utah Warriors of Major League Rugby. I am Jerem Jordan alongside Banksy, who's hopefully on board with my new ball retrieval idea for Major League Rugby in 2023. <laughs> What do you think? Bro, my kids got an RC car and I got to roll a duct tape. We could we could make that happen real quick. <laughs> Can we figure out a way though to have it bring piña coladas up to us in the booth? That's Ooh. what the people really want. Now we're talking. We're going to have to get it up a ramp. Uh but we'll figure it out. We're live on the Utah Warriors Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube account. Subscribe to the podcast version where you will hear what didn't make any sense, perhaps, uh, a moment ago on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud. If you're listening, it's a remote-controlled like RC car, but in the form of like a van that was taking javelins at a track meet back. I, I'm thinking this is on like free kicks or ball goes out of bounds, hookers trying to track it down. You know, uh, penalty goals uh, from kickers. That's where I think it could be used. Okay. On the restart, we can have it drive the ball out to the middle of the pitch so it's ready for referee. Absolutely. That's where I'm thinking we use it. Uh, send in your uh, questions and comments if you've got them. We'll try and get to those. Here's what's on the rundown today. It's a Robbie Abel show. He returns as assistant coach. Yeah, he's back. We'll talk about how this is very unique and awesome. Also, USA Eagles trying to get the, uh, the U.S. back in the World Cup. We'll talk about uh, that situation. MLR draft coming up. We'll remind you about the picks, the date, some growth in the league, some numbers were uh, uh, given, and hey, it's a numbers game. Two of the top ten scores all time in Major League Rugby play for the Utah Warriors. We'll tell you who coming up later in the program. But first, let's talk about assistant coach Robbie Abel renewed on a three-year contract. This is great news. Robbie did some really nice work as the forwards coach this year. When you get a new head coach. That guy brings in his assistants, typically. The assistants aren't retained when a coach is fired midseason, typically, as, as happened in this case. But Robbie Abel is renewed on a three-year contract. Sean Davies expected to be renewed as well. What's your reaction to Robbie Abel returning? I absolutely love this. I know he's a guy that's well-respected in the locker room, carries a lot of mana because of his playing experience and resume, but also the love and compassion that he has for the guys as individuals as well. This is a big signing for the Utah Warriors from like not only a brain trust standpoint, but from a culture standpoint, you know, I know as uh, Brandon Sparks talked with Coops about the opportunity to keep both of these guys, Coops was on board because of the quality that we have with, you know, both Davies and uh, officially now Robbie Abel under contract. And I love that it's a three year deal too. So there's no guesses or speculation year to year. The boys can just get stuck into the hard work right away. That's an investment in an assistant coach. Uh, I can speak from, Experience at BYU, the assistant coaches are, uh, you know, definitely year to year. A lot of the head coaches outside of football and men's basketball are even year to year, right? Obviously, there are buyouts and negotiations and whatnot of that. But the investment in Greg Cooper for five, in uh, Robbie Abel for three is awesome. And when Brandon Sparks, the general manager of the Utah Warriors, told us, uh, you know, last week, two weeks ago when this happened, yeah, we're working on getting those guys back. It was like, oh, really? I, w- I was surprised because this is not a common occurrence. Well, look at how these Warriors played down the stretch, especially the forward pack where they were outgunned and undermanned. They still overperformed, you know, when you basically lose your entire second row and the depth at that second row to injury. And yet still they won almost as many scrums as anyone in Major League Rugby. They had some of the fewest penalties and some of the fewest turnovers by any forward pack. You know, So this was a group that continued to rise and grow, which is why, despite a hard season, so many of us were so excited about the possibilities in the future. And you look at how Utah played down the stretch, like you talked about. The win over Austin, the win over ATL, the, the uh, minus three cards, uh, you probably beat L.A. Uh, at home. I mean, it was interesting. You mentioned the numbers there, and, and we're seeing on your screen. Utah led Major League Rugby in scrums one, 124. How about that? How about that? And then second fewest penalties, second fewest turnovers of any forward pack. They did great work, and and let's be honest, uh, it's tough when you have two assistants coming up with the game plan for three coaches, right? Sean Pittman was let go uh, early in the season after some struggles. 
And Sean Davies and Robbie Abel made it happen. And uh, so we look forward to Sean Davies being renewed as well. And like you mentioned, these two guys are really good. Robbie Abel, obviously, Maori All Black, super rugby experience, ton of ton of experience. He's still playing. He's playing uh, provincially with Auckland, which we'll talk to Robbie coming up in just a moment. And then Sean Davies, of course, the USA experience, local guy from BYU, um, starting scrum half of the 2019 World Cup. Like, it's hard to beat assistant coach resumes like these guys have, not to mention the uh, Greg Cooper. So I'm stoked to, that this is the coaching staff we have for the next couple of years. I mean, to get it all settled in, and I know Sparksy said when he talked to Coops that keeping those two guys was as much a non-negotiable term as he could possibly have. I mean – it was a part of the deal coming to the Warriors to keep those two guys on. That's how highly this front office thinks of what Robbie and Shawnee did. And then to add that layer now with the guidance and the, the wisdom that Coops has, it's going to be awesome for this Utah Warriors team. I can't wait. Very exciting stuff to have Robbie Abel back. And like we mentioned, uh, Sean Davies uh, also expected to return as an assistant coach with the backs and the offense. So if you're ready to see these Warriors in action, all right, be prepared. You know Dub Nation is going to put on a show this year. Get your 2023 season tickets now. Get them locked in. Call 801-477-7652. That's 801-477-7652. Pick your seats, get set, and get ready to rock the four stripes in the red and black for the best home field advantage in Major League Rugby. Get your season tickets now. Now joining us is the retained assistant coach for the Utah Warriors, Robbie Abel. Robbie, how's it going down in New Zealand, man? Very well, brother. Very well. Great to see you. Uh, where's the cowboy hat? Uh, I haven't seen you with uh, you know the Indiana Jones hat in a long time. What happened? Man, I, I actually took it to a Auckland function, to a rugby function on the weekend, and um, yeah, gone straight away. It's it's not something that um people get here often, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I have no idea who's got it. A lot straight away. Yeah. Yeah, take it. Off your head, gone. Yeah. 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 It's it was one of those like we had a function and everyone's trying to wear it and like thinking like, oh, I'm a cowboy. Yeah. Gone. So all good. Good thing good thing I've resigned so I can get another cowboy hat. Yes, I think you can get another cowboy hat. You can come back and get a whole school uh and take it back from the offseason, which would be awesome. Okay, so let's be honest. When, when there's a new head coach, typically that head coach brings in his own assistants. But this situation is unique because you and, and uh, you know, Sean's expected to be retained as well, are going to come back, which is awesome. I think this is so unique and awesome. What was it like to go through this process of uncertainty, but then ultimately re-sign with the Warriors? Um, to be honest, for me, it, um, the plan's always been the same, just – uh, same as when, I, when I'm playing, same as when I'm coaching, kind of just take every week as it comes. Um, it kind of sucks in a lot of ways in terms of like, and I, my wife gets frustrated with, with this lifestyle, but you, you live every week, um, one game week at a, every, so sorry, you live your life one game week at a time. And um, that's all I was, you know, pretty much doing through that, through that year. And then um, I'll just let it fall where, where it may, you know, like, um, my plan was always just to do my best and, and see what happened. Um, and then I was, from those results, able to kind of connect with uh, everyone there at the Warriors and then with, with Coops and then kind of go from there. And, you know, um, I'm stoked that um, I have the opportunity to continue to learn under uh, under Coops and, and to, to um, yeah, continue on this path with the Warriors. Brendan Sparks, uh, you know, when we talked to him about uh, the the assistants and whatnot, he said, no, the expectation is we're going to bring those two back. And that I, that was a bit surprising for me, which is exciting, because I like you and Sean. Obviously, Sean, my old uh, roommate at BYU, oh, you. And, and you, of course. <laughs> so so were, were you nervous you may not be retained? Like, what was that process like as, as obviously, the, the brass with the Warriors wanted to retain you? But at the end of the day, you know, Greg Cooper's got to want you, Robbie, on his staff. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and um, to be fair, I've, I've been in, in the business of rugby long enough to kind of know nothing is certain. Um, and uh, end of the day, it is a business. So, you know, you kind of just put your best foot forward and, and hope for the best. Um, you know, so the, and there was a bit of nerves there there in terms of like oh we'll, we'll discontinue and you know what's greg gonna um 
think of uh, me being there with him, um, you know, especially with someone so experienced. We've got a ton of guys that would love to to be in this position, and I'm stoked that that um, that I get to be here. So, you know, those nerves do come, but at the same time, I'm used to it. You know, and um, for me, there's no better way to live than than uh, with with a little bit of nerves and a bit of edge um, in your day to day life. You know. It keeps you on edge, that's for sure. We're talking to Robbie Abel, assistant coach for the Utah Warriors. Did you already know, Greg? Was there a relationship there, or did you have to create one? No, I actually haven't met. I haven't met Greg before. Um, but, I mean, he's a he's a legend around uh, New Zealand. So he, he played for Auckland, actually. Um, and there's some unreal stories uh, about him when he was in his days playing for Auckland. Um, so I'm playing for Auckland at the moment now. So I was able to connect with a fair few people um, who knew him. And, um, you know, I've had some some great experiences listening to those stories. And the character of the man came through um, far before I met him. Um, and then I connected with him, uh, you know, once he had kind of, uh, once he had kind of signed on as, as head coach. And then the intro went from there and, and kind of started to, uh, as we are now trying to start into a build a relationship and, and see how we mesh together and those sorts of things. So, so it's Auckland boys. That's the real connection. There. <laughs> well, I don't know if he'd call himself an Auckland boy. Not, not a, not a whole lot of people do, to be honest. He played, he played a fair uh, while in other places, but yeah, um, he's a legend here. So that's awesome. You mentioned some unreal stories. Does one stick out that you want to share with the people? Look, I, I know he, he made the All Blacks um, as a young fella from uh, when he was playing for Auckland. Uh, so I think when, he's, when he first made the All Blacks, there's some of the guys here have said that he was, he was a young guy here, first made the All Blacks. And I, I don't know if it's – if I know that he's had some – not issues with his health, but he's had a lot of things that he's overcome, uh, um, you know, in his time you know, that have been – pretty publicized i'm not too sure how much everyone knows but you know i know that uh as a young as a young guy he went through a lot in order to become an all black and, and reach his dreams so for me i take a lot from that and i think our boys will too um you know he's battled he's battled a lot in order to achieve he's sacrificed a lot in, a, in an era uh where you know you didn't get paid to do what you what you did you know you didn't get paid to to train um, every day, play on the weekends, try to play representative rugby, and um, I love that. I love that that era. My my dad was from that era. Played um, against Greg Cooper in that uh, in that era. All of those sorts of things, you know. So it's I have a lot of respect for the guys who paved the way for people to uh, live the life that I have, you know, and uh, be paid to play the game. These guys did it for free and probably trained twice as hard as us. Um, so yeah, I'm grateful for that. And I'm sure the boys are going to learn a ton from those experiences. And with Greg, we're talking specifically about cancer, like he, he are, yeah. in cancer to play rugby at the highest level. And then he had like, his humility is unbelievable. I was reading about him when, when he was hired, his brother replaces him on, uh, as an all black, like that could be the best or worst thing for a relationship ever. And then also, um, you know, he he wants he wants to be with that coach who actually kind of relegated him later on his staff um, in Super Rugby, which is unbelievable. So you're talking about what he's overcome physically, emotionally, the humility. This guy sounds like the real deal. Not to mention the resume. So I'm I'm excited for Greg Cooper, man. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure, some ins some truly inspirational stuff. And you know, the guys here. Our physio at Auckland was the physio at that time as well. So they've been around for years. Yeah. Wow, um, and the way those guys speak about uh, speak about him as a person, um, for me, um, and knowing the character of those guys that, that I know, and hearing the way that they speak about uh, Greg as, as a person, really made me excited to to work with them. So, yeah. that's great. Okay, why was Utah and its team still a good fit for you? Because you certainly could have chosen to move on as well, but it sounds like you wanted to stay with this with this uh, program. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I mean, for me, uh, we're building something special. And I, the way I, I look at it, um, as we're going through the season that's just gone, I wanted to, to build 
uh, something or implement things that that can carry on through and kind of look at a long term picture. I don't want to do things or, or start to implement things that uh, we're going to get lost after this year, you know. So there, that that in, in itself meant that there's unfinished business. You know, we planned. I planned on uh, implementing things that would take time. Um, you know, whether that be ways to more ways to scrum, ways to defend, um, ways to attack the breakdown, all these sorts of things that I knew at the time implementing would take time. And by time, I mean, it does take for, in order to get those things down, it takes months and if not years to, to get them to the area, to the, sorry, to the level that you want to be at. Um, so once some of those things are started, uh, it's pretty hard to walk away from a, an unfinished job. So what, uh, what is it that you felt like you uh, implemented that you, you still need to finish? Um, and, and finish is, you know, uh, the operative word there, but that you want to continue to put into place with the work. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, so so uh, just the things around our, our contact, you know, what I, what I found about the boys is, uh, uh, that I haven't seen a lot of in a lot of other places. Our boys have an appetite for contact that doesn't come naturally to a lot of people. Um, you know, I, I when I took over kind of the defense, the defensive area, um, a bit strange for me to take over defense because I don't even like making tackles. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> but uh, the boys they have they have this appetite for contact and this this ability to uh whack people that i've i uh, haven't ex experienced much of um, in terms of you know groups as a whole so in order to kind of the things that we implemented were what ways what ways do we make the most of that ability or that appetite to absolutely kill people um those areas are obviously tackle area breakdown um, and then for the forward set piece. And, um, you know, you start to talk about different ways to more, different ways to defend more, different ways to, to scrum, different ways to tackle, different ways to attack breakdowns. Um, yeah, and again, all those things take time. Uh, all those things, and, and you go down some paths and then change paths and, and want to look at some other things. The important thing for me is that we stay open-minded and, and keep continuing to grow. And for me, myself as a coach, I've got massive areas to, to, to grow in that in those spaces. And the boys, we've got massive uh, opportunities to grow. So for me to jump on, the, on, on again and then continue to do that with, these, with this group of boys and with the coaches there, it's, it's an unreal experience. We're talking to Robbie Abel, an assistant coach who doesn't like to tackle but coaches defense on Dub Nation. Uh, let's talk about uh, last season. There was some real positive momentum, especially at the end of the year, uh, in in beating Atlanta, in uh, beating Austin, in in a really great, crazy three card yellow card game with LA. Like there was some great momentum in terms of, of good play on the field. What do you feel like can carry over from one season to the next? Versus no, we have to we have to completely start over in this area. Um, uh, to be fair, I don't think there's really anything that it needs to be completely started over. Um, but I do feel that uh, evolving as a team is, is crucial. You know, I don't think that we can show the same pictures um, over and over again and um, expect to kind of get the same results or better results. I do think that every team every, and every good team has to continually tweak little things. Um, in our game, whether that be on attack, on defense, set piece, whatever it is. Uh, uh, so, and I guess that's that's our job as coaches to find those little one percent here, one percent there, all those things that add up to to continually help us to keep learning and growing as a team. And then we'll get results. You know, we'll keep we'll be able to um, we'll be able to replicate some of those results we had back end. And those results came from that process, from the process of, of tweaking something here, tweaking something here, whether that be in round eight or nine, by round five, uh, by round, you know, 14, uh, we were starting to see the benefits of that. So that's the, that's the pattern that needs to continue. 
What did it mean to you to have both tight head props from the Utah Warriors on the USA Eagles in the uh, Chili series? That was pretty cool to have both Utah Warriors yeah. guys represent Paul Mullen and Angus McClellan. That's 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 awesome. Like uh, to see those guys. <clears throat> One start, one, one come off the bench, especially in an area when the, for, for tight end props or for any front row in general, both are going to play. You know, both are going to get good minutes. Both are going to contribute to to the results. To, those guys are, are both quality players. Um, so it's, to, it's always great to see people that you work with get get recognized for the hard work that they put in. Uh, and those two, they they uh, they really do work hard. And then they, they're smart scrum um, they're good athletes, and most of all, they're just good people. Um, you know, Paulie and Gus, unbelievable blokes. So it's awesome to, to see them get the results. Coming up uh, in a few minutes, Banksy and I will break down kind of the next step for the U.S. in trying to make the World Cup. Um, and and when it when it comes to uh, the forward, as we look at the draft coming up, obviously you don't want to have to start a draft pick per se. But we saw last year there was some great development. A couple guys started a few games, came off the bench. What areas do you feel like in the forward pack need to be addressed in the draft or especially in uh, free agent signing in the offseason? Um, to be fair, I like where, where our, our pack is at. Uh, you know, we, we've obviously, we've probably got uh, a hooker to get having, uh, with, sorry, with Chad hanging up the boots. Um, I've been telling him, since since he announced his retirement retiring, I told him we're only going to run two hookers, and uh, and then just give him a phone call um, if we ever need him. So <laughs> I, I don't. Be think, ready. I don't think, yeah, 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 yeah. But I think I think we'll probably need one in that area. Other than that, man, I, I honestly reckon we could run it back, and and we're pretty good along a lot of those those um, those spots in the forward pack. There's obviously areas and some guys may move on some some guys may do different things but whatever it is and i i know brandon's looking pretty heavily into the draft and i've been looking at, at a lot of those players there but um yeah i don't really see any any glaring holes or anything like that i think we've got a good group of guys who are going to come back healthier and and ready to go through next year and uh yeah i think we'll be i think we'll be okay in that area Okay, so you're an assistant coach with the Utah Warriors, but you're also still playing. Tell us about what's going on. Uh, you mentioned playing in Auckland. There. Yeah. Um, to be fair, man, what's going on lately has been um, I've just had a real sore back and some sore lungs um, <laughs> from getting back into, into training so full on. But, hey, it's been awesome. So I'm back. We've got our first game this week uh, against North Harbour. Uh, it's, a, it's a big grudge match for us. And um, it's pretty hard and fast for the next uh, 10 weeks or so. Uh, we've got three games in the next, in, sorry, three games in eight days uh, coming up. And, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're full on into it. So I came back straight away after the season and then just jumped straight into training. Been training since. And, uh, yeah, ready to rip in. And then, uh, for those who don't know, the, people are familiar with the All Blacks, but there's Maori All Blacks as well, which you have played on. Um, inform our, you know, probably mostly American audience, like, what that team is compared to the All Blacks. Yeah, so I guess uh, Maori All Blacks, it's, it's uh, made up of similar to the All Blacks, but, but you have to have Maori heritage to play. Um, and to be honest, there's a ton, like, in terms of boys that are eligible, there's a ton of boys that are eligible. Once you go through all the super rugby teams, it, it's, it becomes a pretty stacked side. If we saw uh, a couple months ago, they beat Ireland. Uh, Māori All Blacks beat Ireland um, in that first test. Really good test. Um, and I play a lot of games every year and awesome tours. It's a bit of a different uh, experience in, in that, it is heavily focused on culture and, and learning. It's it's an unbelievable experience, but still heavily on on obviously like uh, on every obviously the performance side and being able to compete and be able to win win games as we saw uh, um, a couple months ago, knocking off uh, the the, uh, the big dogs island. They're the big dogs indeed, uh, and they're barking yeah. quite loud after the performance against <laughs> the All Blacks. <laughs> 
yeah. which, which is fun. We'll see what the World Cup, uh, you know, gives us next year. It'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be an exciting one, eh? Yeah, it'll be awesome. Well, Robbie, we appreciate the time all the way from New Zealand. Congratulations on being retained on a, a three-year deal, and uh, we're excited to see you here in a couple of months back with the squad getting ready for the year. For sure, man. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. So can't wait to get back and um, get into some cold weather and uh, and some footy over there. So love it, man. Great to see you. Thanks, Robbie. Cheers, Bella. Experience what everyone is talking about. The nonstop, action-packed, and fan-favorite sport of Utah. Warriors Rugby. Experience Utah's most exciting professional sport with group nights and single game and season tickets available. Great scrub from the Warriors. Renew your season tickets for the 2023 season now with eight games starting as low as $99. Visit warriorsrugby.com for details. Do it. And our thanks to Robbie Abel for joining us all the way from New Zealand. Best of luck uh, to him playing still, like we talked about, which is awesome in the provincial championships. Okay, let's talk about the USA's World Cup bid. Didn't get it done against Chile, as we've talked about. But they still got a shot, but they got to win a qualifying tournament in November uh, on the other side of the world. Where is it again? Qatar? I can't even remember. Uh, Saudi Arabia? Somewhere over there? We know the other three teams in the tournament. Uh, Hong Kong, who's ranked 21st. Portugal, as you see, ranked 20th. Kenya, 33rd, who had lost to Namibia. And our boy, Cliven Lobster, in the USA. Are the USA Eagles going to get it done, Banksy? You'd have to say that the Eagles are the favorites in this tournament for sure with the talent they have available. Uh, I think the boys just really need to put it together and just get some chemistry. You know, there were times against Chile that they looked great and there were times that they looked really disgruntled. But the USA got to be the favorites in this Reap Change tournament to make the World Cup. It's in Dubai. It's November 6th through the 18th. So there you go. Uh, they they got to get it done. It'd be such a severe disappointment if they don't make it. They had, they had a great – all they had to do was win at home in Glendale and uh, unfortunately did, didn't get it done. Paul Mullen, Angus McClone, as we talked about, repping the squad uh, at, at tight end props. Uh, Paul Asike would have been in there, but he broke his hand in the first game against Chile and is recovering. So perhaps that hand will be ready to go in November and it'll be back in the mix. It is a little awkward too, Banksy, in November – because you're going to have to recall all the guys, A.J. McGinty most notably from Sale in the English Premiership, the best player on the USA team, to come in and, and gather in the middle of the club season for those, some of those guys, for the MLR guys. They're not in season yet. Maybe not in the best shape. They'll need to be. Go to Dubai and get this done. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of accountability from the staff on keeping these guys in shape, keeping them up to date on what's going on. It will be interesting to see – for the European clubs, whether they release the players, because I think in that window, they're not required to release those players for those tournaments because it's not the official international window. So we'll mm. see if we can make some friends and make sure all those guys are available for that tournament. Especially AJ. Like, he's the key to a lot of what the USA does. He's a fantastic player. Okay, MLR draft coming up August 18th. Reminder, Utah has the 4th and 11th picks in the first round. No pick in the second round and then the fourth pick of the third round. We've talked about where we think uh, Utah needs to address things. We'll talk about this even more coming up in two weeks from today, the day before the draft. But you'll be able to watch this on uh, FS2 at 7 Eastern that night. It's exciting. It's the third ever draft, and something that uh, Utah used very effectively last year. All three players, all three draft picks played, and two started several games. You know, the Utah Warriors have been really good in always adjusting and refining their process and discovering players and talent because, remember, the development of the college player here in America is still far behind where the professional game is. So there's still a really high ceiling of possibility for these players as they grow. So it's really about identifying potential, not just about identifying the most talented player in the draft. And then you have to pair that with where the needs of the team are. And for example, maybe finding a guy that can give you significant minutes as a second row substitute, a guy that can play the four, five, or six, you know, somebody that can come in and really contribute in some minutes right away. And then maybe use some of those other picks to develop a guy, maybe like an Elijah Hayes, who you're going to get some real quality minutes playing behind a Gus McClellan and a, and a, and a Paul Mullen 
to grow him as a front rower and as that prop to be the future of the franchise. So there's a lot of different layers to the development and the farming of these players out of those college ranks and into the professional level. Okay, let's talk about some of the growth in Major League Rugby. Some numbers came out from the league this week. Let's break it down. So 21% growth in uh, social following, 40% in stadium, which is great. Almost 50% growth in media value. That's huge, right? You want to get to the point where that a TV contract is worth some uh, dough there. Overall viewership, massive growth as well. And then uh, the Rugby Network subscribers grew a ton as well. What do you think of these numbers? What do you make of this? All positive numbers for Major League Rugby and for our sport in general, as more eyeballs here in America continue to find our sport and most importantly, come back to it to watch it again. You know, if you get one real interaction with the game, especially for us at Zions Bank Stadium, where our home atmosphere and our home experience is head and shoulders above what a lot of the rest of the league is doing, you want to come back and be a part of that energy and a part of that family atmosphere and that energetic vibe that really permeates the entire Dub Nation. Okay, and we finish with this. Uh, it's a numbers game. Uh, James Dealey, of course, uh, puts out a lot of stats with Major League Rugby. Two of the top ten scorers in tries all time in Major League Rugby played for the Utah Warriors. And Mikey Teo there with 23 at number four. And then uh, Mika Kruse, 17 total at number nine. Two of the most dynamic uh, scorers in the history of the league through five years. And think about how close somebody like Joe Mano is when you're really talking about sitting on the bench for almost 18 months recovering from a major knee surgery. So as he continues to develop and score tries by the boatload, which we know he's capable of, I can't wait to add more Warriors to that list. It's going to be fun. And it'll be fun in two weeks on our next episode when we preview the Major League Rugby draft. And uh, we're excited about that. And then uh, we have off-season signings and kits and schedules and all kinds of things to break down. So stay with us every about every other week in the off-season as we get ready for the 2023 Major League Rugby draft. Shout out to you, Banksy, for playing sick today. Appreciate you being on the program despite being under the weather. Nice work, Mike. Well, I got my sexy voice on right now. I'm a little, <laughs> I'm an octave lower than I normally am. In my head, anyway. I probably sound like hot garbage to you guys, but in my head, I sound hey, like Barry White right now. You sound amazing. <laughs> uh, that's what I appreciate. Okay, that'll do it for us. Like and share this episode of Dumb Nation. Follow the Utah Warriors on social media for the latest. Robbie Abel from New Zealand, Mason Benson, Billy the producer, and Banksy. I'm Jerem Jordan. Go Warriors!